All right, we are back, Sure Sales Group Show, episode 25 with phase three of four in the listing process. And this is where the fun starts. We did our homework in phase one and two. We co-created um, a marketing plan based on a thorough understanding of the home, the market, et cetera. Now we get to do what we get paid to do and what a good listing agent should be able to do which is get the most exposure for a home as possible. There's really only two things you're hiring a listing agent to do. One is know the market and help you, you know, come to a pricing strategy and a marketing strategy. Once they can do that, boom, it's how do we get as many eyeballs and get as much attention and get as much activity on the home and then negotiate offers uh, when they come in. So. Phase three is introducing the property to the market. Let's go ahead and launch. Let's go ahead and tactfully um, and efficiently and effectively attack that timeline that we've drawn out in phase one and two about launching the listing. So here we're actually launching the marketing plan. And again, this is co-created with the seller, but what it involves is getting the house on coming soon, getting all of the pictures on every third party website in those IDX, Internet Data Exchange servers. Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, Coldwell Banker, Remax, all of them. Make sure they're all done properly. Making sure that the buyer profile target is seeing the ad before they even know they should be looking for a house. Now, we have something here called create the perception of value. One thing we always want to do when we're doing our broker outreach or doing our buyer profile targeted marketing or we're talking with anyone really about the property is how do we create the perception of value? And we say perception not like we're doing some bait and switch technique, but perception is reality. We need to know these are the value points in this community. Is it the schools, the size, the location? It's normally a combination of 50 bullet points, but as good marketers, let's leverage that to all of our audiences and create the perception of value. Then. You know, we're attracting buyers. Hopefully they come to see the home and then we monitor the activity. At this point, when we know we've done everything we can do and we've prepared and launched it properly, we need to wait and let the market respond to our, you know, kind of next level marketing approach. And we've seen it and the, the proof's in the pudding, it works, but there is an element of patience here um, to wait, attract the buyers, let the buyers see the property and then monitor the activity. And by monitoring the activity, we want to know how many clicks on Zillow are we getting? How many clicks on Facebook are we getting? How many people are scheduling a showing? How many people follow through with the showing? How many agents are providing us feedback? One thing we're really good at is when someone expresses interest and goes and tours one of our listings, we want to know anything they want to tell us, good or bad. I love he hearing the um, constructive criticism. Hey. The basement spelled like cat piss. If two people say that, we have a problem. We can fix it. That's good to know. I didn't know that. I don't go into every basement of all of our listings every week. So we really encourage the feedback so we can monitor it and then in turn have a really good communication strategy with our sellers. We do a weekly update, a weekly review where we're sending not just here's how many showings we had, here's the feedback. Here's how many people looked at your home on Zillow. Here's how many people saved it. Here's how many people looked at it on our website. Here's how many people saw it on Facebook. We want to show you what we're doing because we know, and the National Association of Realtors has proved through study and study and study, the reason agents get fired is because they don't communicate and over communicate with their clients to let them know they are actually working and, and doing the things they said they were going to do. So, we don't leave that to chance. We have our listing coordinator send out that weekly review every week with all of the details, copying the listing agent, and then if need be, we go ahead and get on the phone and make some tweaks. In the cat piss in the basement example, that's something where you'd pick up the phone right away. Hey, everything looks good. The buyer said the basement stinks. Really important feedback before the next wave of showings. So introducing the property to the market and establishing a communication plan is phase three. And then, you know, on average within 30 days here on the Sure Sales Group listing, we're going to be negotiating offers. This is critical. All offers are not equal, of course, and they're also not just about the purchase price. And I've, I've harped on this in several of the past episodes, but we need to look at the price, the financing, 
talk to the lender to make sure this is not just a pre-qualification, but hopefully a pre-approval. Hopefully they have all the buyer's documents, income, tax, credit, the works. Um, so we want price, we want financing, we want to qualify the financing, we need to know about the closing cost situation, settlement time frame, the contingencies involved, are they going to do a home inspection, are they going to do a well and septic inspection, are they going to do any separate different inspections, environmental testing, um, all of those components within the offer need to be analyzed and then weighed on if we're going to accept this offer or not or how we're going to counter the offer. Now, strategically responding to offers is an art. It's not a science, it's an art. You need to have some level of finesse and be able to read a situation. Obviously, if we get an offer in the first day or if we get an offer when we're still coming soon and we're not even on the market, that response might be a little bit differently than once we've been on the market for 45 days, naturally. So we need to make sure we're maximizing every dollar for you when we're analyzing and then responding to the offers. And part of working with a listing agent is you, you want to work with someone who does this every day, who can take the emotion out of it and provide you in an advisory capacity some options. And at the end of the day, it's going to be your decision, what you want to do. But most people, if you're like me, you want to make the most amount of money you can with the least amount of hassle throughout the process. So we want to optimize the offer. And optimizing is different for different people, whether it's just getting the highest price, getting the highest net offer, getting the shortest time frame, getting removing contingencies. We needed to have that dialogue after strategically analyzing the offer. Another key component here is, and I've run into this many times, a lot of agents don't have processes for here's how we should respond if we get an offer really early in the process. Here's how we should respond if we get multiple offers, which is a whole different video on how to handle multiple offers. There's a legal component to it. You got to treat people fairly. Um, but this is a great situation to be in and you don't want to, uh, to screw it up. And there's nothing worse than having two offers and not getting any of them done because you got greedy or because you didn't have a good strategy in place or because you didn't read the situation right or because you couldn't come to a decision as a seller on what you should do because your agent's kind of saying, oh my God, we have so many offers, which one do you want to take? That's not a, con a consultative approach. That's not operating as an advisor. So you need to have these processes. What happens if we get an offer right away? What happens if we get multiple offers? What happens if we get a contingent offer? Those can be really good. They can also be a big pain in the ass. You want your house contingent on another house selling? Well, there's pros and cons there. You know, if they're contingent, maybe we can just get everything we want because we have some leverage. Hey, we'll let you sell your house first. You're giving us the right price. You're giving us the right time frame. You're doing things on our watch, marching to the beat of our drum. And we want to analyze the daylights out of what you have going on with your house versus, oh my God, what happens if their house doesn't appraise? What happens if their house doesn't pass inspections? Well, there's the pros and the cons. Let's talk about it. Let's strategize about it. Let's see if it makes sense to entertain it. And then once we have an offer, and especially if you get multiple offers or get early offers, taking a backup offer when the market's hot, not a bad idea. So phase three, you want to get the property on the market, execute on the things you said you were going to do, and then skillfully work with the peers in your industry, the other realtors and, and the buyers to you know, show them the value and, and get the offer and make sure it makes sense for uh, our client. That's, that's what we want to do. So that's phase three. Oh, by the way, this is why you pay an agent commission. This is why you need to hire a professional. And there's an old saying, you've probably heard it before. If you think hiring a professional is expensive, try hiring an amateur when they don't know what the hell's going on with your house and you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Paying an extra half percent, one percent to have really good guidance, to have a really good strategy, the ability, you know, the, the peace of mind that that will give you is well worth it. So again, if you think hiring a professional is expensive, which it is, try hiring an amateur. It's going to cost you a lot more.